So pumped to have you with us for this conversation with Xavier. He's just an awesome guy. Well, thank you, Chris. I am honored to be here. I listen to your podcast literally all the time. So if anyone's nice and awesome, it's you. I've seen so many of your interviews and you're great and I trust you. So that's why I'm here today. What I love about you is so much has changed since we last spoke. And that was almost three years ago. So much has changed. You weren't even really in wrestling at the time back then. Oh my gosh, you're totally right. I completely forgot that I met you at WrestleCade. Uh, you're right. I So much has changed and I'm honestly so grateful. Uh, back then, I was just a fan and here I am now in the IGWC, uh, number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship, baby. Let's go. Did you always have this much personality and this much charisma or is this a byproduct of becoming a wrestler? I'm going to say yeah. And honestly, I have to credit theater. I had such a passion for making things seem believable whenever I was on stage. So I was always so over dramatic with my delivery of lines and things like that. And I think you have to be passionate enough to deliver in such a way. Like whenever you leave an arena at whatever event you are, people are going to remember the ones that stood out the most. Not everyone can go up there and be flamboyant and excited. Some people are like in a shell. So I have to really credit theater for breaking me out of that shell and allowing me to use that charisma everywhere in life. And it also helps that I am so in love and passionate about wrestling. Like watching it ever since I was a kid and falling in love with these characters and the theatrical parts of all of it, not only just the physical aspect of it. I have so much respect that I have to give it my all every single time I'm on that ring in that stage. I want to key in on one of the words you said there's passion. And I think that that's like the thing that drives your whole career is like this insane passion. And if we take this way back, what do you think your first passion was? If we're taking this back farther than theater, then I think my first passion was definitely drawing. Like, I've always loved drawing uh, gear specifically, what the wrestlers would wear, because I love that everyone had their own style and it was so unique. I loved it so much that I even like took those gears that I drew and I create them in the video games and put them on the wrestlers and upload them and people downloaded them and the support is so amazing and so nice to have. Like, it feels so good to have that backing and I can translate that to being here. Everyone on that roster, male or female in the IGWC, they will always have my full support 100% because I know how hard it is to get booked to have these matches and how excruciating the training is. Like, it, this is not for the week at all. Clapping for other people doesn't take away from your success. And I think that people are so nervous to applaud somebody for doing a great job or to, even if they're like, you're not in competition with anybody. It's okay to say, hey man, great job, I'm proud of you. See, you get it, you get it. And I like to believe that everyone here is actually rooting for each other, but that's sadly not the case. Like for example, our champion right now, Vincent, he is so full of himself, arrogant, cocky, makes everything about himself, especially in the locker room. It gets really, really, really annoying. And honestly, it gets hard to root for him. Like when he became champion, I was very, very proud of him and excited for him. But that success went to his head and he's so delusional. Like I've never met anyone so delusional in my life. It's crazy. Remember that time that you were having that conversation with... Vincent, and he said that thing to you? You don't have to talk around it, it's fine. Yes, I remember every single time that he's fat shamed me. And honestly, it's not shaming if the person that you're shaming isn't ashamed of it. I've labeled myself as the heavyweight high flyer since day one. I could whoop his ass from here to kingdom come. <laughs> like, do you remember whenever he was talking all that trash? about you a couple years ago, saying that, oh, you're just some wannabe commentator that had to make it on YouTube and only do podcasts. And then look at you now. You're like the best interviewer in wrestling right now. And not even in wrestling, in Hollywood. I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> That's fine. I, I completely understand you. Um, yeah, let's not even give him any type of attention. Just know that come SummerSlam, 
I will be your new champion. I will take the title and I will do more than what he ever could possibly dreamed of. I'm never letting go of this. Like, Chris, you would have to literally kill me to get that title away from me. It's all I ever wanted since growing up. I always wanted to be champion. And just like my idol, Nikki Bella, I will be the longest reigning IGWC men's champion in history. And no one will stop me. And definitely not the little crybaby Vincent. And speaking of crybaby, our match at SummerSlam is a 15 minute Iron Man match. And the loser has to wear a diaper. And I cannot wait to see Vincent cry like a baby for four matches in that diaper getting his ass kicked but you're right let's i like i said let's not give him any more attention he loves it so much and i'm not here to give him all the attention in the world i am happy to be number one contender and i am content with my training and how i'm going to go about this match and i want you all to be watching because i will be champion i'll ask you the question that i ask everyone in this interview i asked as my last question what are three things in your life that you're grateful for right now? I am grateful for, let's see, I'll count down from, I guess, least grateful to most grateful. Uh, I am grateful for my health. I know with the fat shaming, people are like, maybe you should lay off of this and that, but like, I feel good. That's all that matters. I don't really care about numbers on a scale, period. Number two, I'm grateful to be here, my dream job living the life I've always wanted and I know I've said it a lot but being number one contender I feel like I've been screwed so many times and I finally get my one-on-one -on -one and uh the words can't describe how happy I am man I swear and last but not least I'm grateful for my family my friends and especially the fans they are what keep me here rooting for me constantly and I'm nothing without them so I'm dedicating this match to them <laughs> Thank you so much for this interview, Chris.